Uh-oh, part two. The video shut off. I think I pressed something. Okay, so if I out the person, then the this person may be watching my videos, right? So I don't want to make this person feel bad because I'm an empath and I care what people feel. I care what people think. I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And let me tell you something. Narcissists, they get their feelings hurt super easy. By the way, I hate my eyebrows. <laughs> I hate them. Just had to go there a minute. Okay. So anyway, um, it's hard when you're looking at the video of yourself. Like I want to like, you know, make tons of comments on what I need fixed on this face, but I'm trying to stay on track here, trying to talk about the matter at hand. So I don't want this person to feel worse than they already feel, because I will tell you something, you guys, narcissists have very low self-esteem. They act like they don't, but really they have really low self-esteem. That's why they act the way they do. That's why they're trying to control everything around them and everyone around them because they don't feel good about themselves within themselves. So they feel this need to put everybody else down and they feel this need to argue and they feel this need to be right. They feel this need to always be in control of everyone and everything. And by the way, I don't want to go on a tangent right now, but Donald Trump is the worst type of an overt narcissist than one could ever get. Like he is cream of the crop, highest overt, largest overt narcissist anybody could ever be. There is really no worse. Now, if you want to get into sociopathy and murdering people and all that, that's another, I mean, we don't know if Donald Trump ever killed anybody. That, I don't even want to go there. But he is extremely racist. And <laughs> with him at the helm of our country, people, he probably will be getting people killed because did you guys hear what he said about um, the migrants? He says they're animals. People that, immigrants, they're animals. He said they're animals. They're not humans. He said they're animals. But I'm not going to go there right now, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to, we'll leave, you know, what, by the way, I was going to say something. I was going to say, we'll leave politics out of this. That's what I was going to say. But when people bring up Do Donald Trump, I say, but we're not discussing politics when we discuss Donald Trump. He's not a politician. He's just a person who thinks he's president. He's a person who thinks he can run a country because he's a narcissist. He wants to be in control of everybody. That's not a politician. He's, he's wants to pretend he's a politician, but he's not a politician. He's, uh, he's worse than any politician we've ever had. I, I listen, you guys, I'm going to say one more thing about, about political or presidency. If a person wants to be a president of the United States, they have to be compassionate, they have to be kind, they have to be caring, they have to be empathic, they have to care about both sides of the country, the Republicans, the Democrats, and everybody in between. They have to feel compassionate and empathic and caring towards everybody as a whole. They cannot be one-sided. If they're one-sided, then that means they're not going to be a president of a democratic country. Or, sorry, of a demo, of a of a democracy. That's the word I'm taking. I'm thinking. You can't be a president of the United 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 States, fifty states, United States of America. You cannot be president of the United States of America because you have to, unless you can unite people. That's why we're called the United States. We want our country to be united. That means taking everybody's differences and mixing them around and uniting them. Uniting them. Making sure that everybody understands each other. That's what it takes to be president of the United States of America. You cannot have a narcissist as president of the United States of America. If you do, you're going to wind up with lots of racism. You're going to wind up with one side of the country going down the crap hole. The other side of the country may benefit, but one side will not. Okay? So you know that he wants the people that have lots of money to benefit and the people that don't have money, he doesn't count them. They're just crappy people. They're, they're animals. They're animals. So anyway, I'm not going to go there right now. I, I already went there, right? I already went there but it's because I'm discussing narcissism. Okay, so let me go back to the matter at hand. I had to just say that. Oh, sorry, I gotta say this too. This is important though. Okay, when people 
are narcissists. They only care about themselves, right? So if they only care about themselves, how can they be president of the United States? How can they be president of any country, right? Really? If they only care about themselves, they only care about themselves. They don't care about their family. They don't care about their spouse. They don't care about their kids. They don't care about the people that live everywhere else. They don't care about anybody but themselves. So why would anybody want somebody to be a president who's a narcissist? Why would anyone want a narcissist to be a president? That's what I meant. How? How? I mean, do you want someone to rule you? Do you want someone to make all the laws up for you? Do you want the person to have your life be what he wants? Or do you want the person to have to let you live your life and your hopes and dreams? Do you want the president to listen to your needs? Do you want the president to listen to all the things that matter to you? Or do you want him to just be like, your needs don't matter. We don't care what you want. We don't care that women need an abortion. We don't care if a woman gets raped and gets pregnant. We don't care if the woman is going to lose her baby and wind up with sepsis. We don't care about that stuff because I'm a narcissist president. I'm telling you guys, when there is a narcissist at the helm of anything, whether it's a helm of a family, helm of a business, God forbid the helm of this country, nothing is going to get accomplished. The only thing that's going to get accomplished is that the narcissist will get what they want. And the other people that are around the narcissist, family members, spouses, kids, people living around him or her, they're not going to get anything they need or want because the narcissist is going to get their way if you allow the narcissist to get their way. That's how it works. You give them power, they take that power. You bow down to them, they take the power. So just learn what I'm saying. It does not matter whether Trump, to me it would never matter and it wouldn't matter to most people that, are, that know about narcissism. If a man or woman who wants to lead the country is a narcissist. It doesn't matter whether they're Republican or Democrat or independent. It doesn't matter. What matters is that they're a narcissist. That's the only thing that matters. What side, it doesn't matter because no matter what, how you slice it, it's a narcissist. The narcissist wants what they want. Remember that. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about your needs or your hopes and your dreams. They care about themselves. That's it. So that's why I don't care whether Trump is Republican or Democrat or independent. I care about who that guy is as a person. And he's a narcissist, so he can't be our president. Sorry. Okay, now we're done with the president uh, thing, subject. Now I'm going to go back to this. I have to go in a minute. but uh, So this person in my family is extremely narcissistic. It's a sickness. It's a sickness. I really don't understand how that person, this person, became a narcissist. I mean, I kind of do and I kind of don't. It's like I saw how this person grew up. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how a family, you know, it's like you have family members that are total empaths and kind and caring and good listeners and compassionate and they genuinely care. And then in the same family... You have a narcissist, a person that doesn't care at all, literally doesn't care about your feelings at all, could care less, right? Makes me kind of wonder if I died, would this person care? That's a painful thought, wondering, you know, I'm thinking they'd probably care, um, but it wouldn't hit them till like later. Like maybe they'd feel some guilt. Narcissists probably feel guilt, but the problem is they're not feeling the feelings in the moment when they need to feel it. They're not treating people with uh, respect and with compassion. They just want what they want in the moment. And if they ever feel bad, it's going to be a very delayed response. If they feel bad at all. I mean, <laughs> a lot of them never feel bad. So it does make me wonder if I died, would this person care? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't. Anyway, bottom line is I was on the phone with this person for all of maybe 10 minutes, right? And I was wondering how long it was going to take until this person flipped and started doing the, the narcissist thing, which is basically trying to tell you off, trying to start a fight, not answering a question, a simple question that you ask them and just trying to 
flip, flipping everything around to try to get under your skin. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get, they're trying to get you mad. It's like they're, it's like inside of them, they're boiling for a fight. They want to have a fight. They want to, I don't understand it. It's like inside there's, there's like anger inside of narcissists. They want to be in control and they want to see other people bothered by them. They want to rile people up and they want to get people upset, but it doesn't work with me anymore because, you know, I grew up with plenty of narcissism around in my family and I learned a lot about it through the years, not only through family, but through dating lots of narcissists. And I learned that being around these types of people makes me very physically sick, like literally chest pain, pain and tightness in my throat, bad headaches, just like I'm a stress mess from living around narcissism and I've dated these types of guys too. And this person is single, the, this person who's a narcissist, because nobody's going to tolerate that behavior. I feel bad because this person is never going to meet, never going to find love. It's never going to happen for this person because no one is going to put up with that. And, and let me tell you, if and when this person finds love, the person that they fall in love with or, well, Narcissists really can't love anybody in any healthy way. But anybody that's going to fall for this person is going to be a doormat. You have to be... How can it, how can you date a narcissist? How can anybody date a narcissist? They don't care about what you have to say. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about anything. So therefore, you'd have to be a doormat, right? So what kind of person would date this person? A doormat. Someone who can't speak. Someone who every time they open their mouth... The narcissist is going to shut them down. Uh, anytime the narcissist, anytime the person that they're dating is in a decent mood, the narcissist is going to change that in a heartbeat and make sure they're in a bad mood because that's what the narcissists want. They want to get under your skin and make you feel like crap. They want to make you feel as crappy as they feel. That's their, their MO every day. They, they just want everybody around to feel as shitty as they do. I don't understand it because I'm the exact opposite. Like I live to make people smile and feel happy. I live to make people feel good. Like I will go to the ends of the earth to make somebody smile. Like that is the most important thing to me. So that's what I want to tell you guys. If you have a narcissist in your life, whether it's a brother, a sister, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, an aunt, an uncle, a parent, a grandparent, a child, or I don't know, anybody, get away from them. And if you have to be around them, if for some reason you're being forced to be around them, you've got to find a way and you've got to practice this and you have to be aware of how to do it. There are workshops for this. I could probably guide you like later. I've never done a workshop on this. I've just had so much repetitive hurt from being around narcissists that I learned that there's, listen, by the way, I'm going to finish what I said in a second, but I'm going to say this. There are times, there are days, depending on my mood, when I have completely let it get under my skin. I have completely let it bother me, okay? I've completely allowed it to make me sick. I have gotten so caught up in it that I will scream and yell and cry and literally look like I'm having and feel like I'm having a mental breakdown. That has happened numerous times from narcissists that I've dated, from I'm not going to, I'm not going to out the family members that are narcissists, but the family members. Okay. Um, and any friends, I had a friend that was a narcissist, a friend. Yes. Uh, but I, but I really didn't have met. I had one friend that was a narcissist that I can think of right now, but I didn't allow that in my friendships because I like to have a 50, 50 relationship and I like to have a connection with people. I like to know that the person that I'm, that I'm, in the relationship with, whether it's friendship, romance, sibling, uh, you know, whoever, right? I want to feel 50-50 with them. I want them to know that they can tell me anything. I want to feel that I can tell them anything. I want to feel a comfort and a love and a, an empathic kind of compassion and support back and forth, me and that person, right? I'm literally the opposite of a narcissist. So this person who I've been discussing, how they want to get under my skin. They, it took this person all of, I think it was six minutes, but I could feel it brewing in them while we were talking. I could feel it. It's like a feel, it's like you hear it in their voice, right? It's something that they get defensive and they get like, 
like they're shutting down or, or I can't explain it. Well, I can. It's like a shutdown. It's like a defensiveness. It's like they want to, they, they're ready to go. They're ready to go. And if you give in, oh, they'll keep it going. I, I had to hang up. I had to hang up. I, I frequently have to hang up on this person because they're starting with me and they're trying to do it. They're trying. But I end the conversation by saying, okay, um, since you're not going to respond to what I asked, I got to go. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. So tonight I had to go make copies of something. And I literally had to go and make copies. I mean, I had to go. I wasn't just hanging up for nothing. I literally had to go. But it was perfect timing because this person wanted to start. They were ready to rumble, honey. They were getting in their rumbling ways. And I had just pulled up to Office Max. And I said, okay, um, have a great night. I got to go and stay well. And I was thinking to myself, I just avoided a massive breakdown on my part. Because if I would have stayed on that phone, oh my God, girls and boys, I would have been crying my eyes out. I, w I could, I mean, I could feel my chest tightening because that's what happens. It's toxic. Get away from those narcissists. I wanted to tell you like what specifically happened and what made me get off the phone. I mean, I was going to have to get off the phone anyway, like I said, because I have to go and make copies of something. But... I'm trying to remember. Okay, so I sent this person. I don't. I can't give you guys details because then it's going to give away who this person is. But I sent this person a link to a health condition of a mutual family member because I wanted this person to know what was going on with the mutual family member. And I had done some research. So I sent the narcissist the information and a link. But I also gave this narcissist an update on what's been going on with me, which has been a lot of stuff going on with my health, like the stuff with my freaking face and the migraine I had and uh, just different things I've got going on because I was just giving them an update because normally, look, I want to know what's going on with my friends and family. I, I ask people to tell me. I want people to tell me, how's your health? How's your mental well-being? How's your family? How I want to know how everybody is doing physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually because I'm an empath and I care, right? So I just assumed the narcissist would care, but but there 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 I go, right? Like like why would I assume that a narcissist, this narcissist, any narcissist, why would I assume they would care about my health conditions? That's my fault. So, I'm taking blame for that. But I guess maybe there's a part of me, you see what I mean, you guys? There's a part of me that wants this person to care. But this person doesn't give a crap because the person's a narcissist. So long story long, I wrote them. I told them about what's been going on with me, even though they don't care. I still wrote it. See, I still want them to care, but they don't care. So I wrote, I wrote something about me, about my health. I asked them how they are doing. Um, turned out that this person, this narcissist had been sick for 10 days. I didn't know that. No one told me they were sick. I had no idea they were sick. So I felt bad they were sick. And I was like, oh, I said, like, what happened? What were the symptoms? And this person's like, the usual, dying. And I'm like, well, you're not dying. You're obviously alive. I said, but but uh, would you have gone to the hospital if you needed it? And this person says, no, would have been too late. I swear to God, this person, no, it would have been too late. I go, what do you mean it would have been too late? If you couldn't breathe, if you were like, yeah, if you were having problems breathing, wouldn't you call 911? And this person's like, no, no, no. I would have gone to bed feeling crappy and then I would have woken up feeling even worse and then by then it's too late. It's like, you can't even have a conversation about someone's illness. Oh, I see a kitty. Of course I want to feed the cat. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. I'm going to be feeding the cat now. Leave it to Beaver here. I got to feed every kitty. I'm going to go over there and give him some food. Poor little guy. Oh, my God. See, you guys? This is what empaths do. They feed hungry babies wherever they go. I'm going to go give him some food and water. Poor little guy. Come here, baby. Come here, mama. I'm going to go leave him some food. I'll be right back. You know what? I'm going to wrap this up real quick and just say this. Oh, my God. Look at the lighting, how it changed. And I have a... This is from my phone case up above here. Okay. Anyway. Come on, mommy. He's so little. It's a little kitty. I better go. Darn it. 
Maybe I'll make a part three. Should I make a part three? Yeah, I'll come back. I'll pause this. I'll be back. Okay, you guys, it's literally uh, 10 minutes later after I paused it. And um, the kitty seemed intrigued by me fixing his food, which, by the way, I gave him wet food and dry food and water. Mixed it all up. I actually travel with containers in my trunk. Um, I save every plastic container that my parents get. I freaking hate plastic, but every time they get a... Um, muffins, cookies, you name it, whatever comes in plastic. I save every plastic container for this purpose so I can feed stray cats. And I feed every cat on the planet. How do I do it? I don't know. I can't afford it. But it makes me feel good to feed a starving animal. It makes me feel good to help people and to help animals. That's how I roll. That's what makes me, gives me a purpose on this earth. So, but the kitty was watching me fix the food and then started walking away. I was like, dude, why you wa you have a nice meal here? Wet food, dry food, water. Like, would you rather have a lizard or a rat? Maybe. So anyway, I set it all up there. I have a specific way I set it up. I was going to show you, but I can't hold the camera. I need to get like a GoPro or something. I had it all set up nice. And then I didn't see the cat. So I'm going to go into Office Max and make some copies of something. And then I'm going to go over there and see if the cat ate. And if he didn't eat it, I'm going to take it back home for all of my cats in my colony, my 30 colony cats that are eating me out of house and home. All right, you guys. Um, Listen, let me remind you. It's freaking hot. Let me remind you. If you're around narcissists. Sorry, I can't get out of the shadow here. If you're around narcissists. Do your best to stay away. They are toxic. You have to find a way to protect yourself. If you guys want me to do some videos on how to protect yourself from narcissists, I mean, I'm not the specialist in that, but we could talk. I could do a, a video on it and we could talk about my experiences and how I deal with it. But trust me, I've gotten pretty sick over it. Matter of fact, probably the reason I have fibromyalgia and a sleep disorder to begin with. But... I would love to talk to people about it because I'm, I'm here to help. That's why I've created these videos because I want to help people and animals. That's the only reason I'm doing these videos, not to hear myself talk and definitely not to see my beautiful face on camera. All I want to do is get Botox. That's the only narcissistic thing about me, honestly. I, I have a hard time looking at myself in the mirror. I mean, I think I'm on a scale of one to 10, a seven, I guess. I'm not unattractive, but certain days I do feel very unattractive um but I do want Botox just a thing it's by the way it's not just for the lines either it's to calm my because I'm I have a lot of deep 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 tension headaches here very painful so Botox helps a little bit with that doesn't help my migraines but it does help tension headaches for me anyway all right you guys uh, I don't want to sign off talking about Botox I want to talk about you me the world animals narcissists empaths and I would like for you guys all to subscribe to my channel and please, please, please share. And please, 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 let's learn about self-love together and self-respect and protecting oneself from narcissism and narcissists because no one should ever be subjected to that kind of abuse. So, by the way, so, by the way, I didn't finish the story, but the end of the story is that I asked this person if they saw the link that I sent to them about the sick family member, right? About the family member that's battling some health issues. And this narcissist says to me, I saw all your complaints about your own health. And I said, yeah, I shared with you what's been going on with me. But did you read the link that I sent you about our mutual family member? And they're like, I saw all the complaints you made. They repeated the same sentence. And I go... Well, I didn't really think they were complaints. I was just sharing with you what was going on in my life like I'd like anybody to share with me. But I was asking you, did you read the link I sent? And again, the narcissist repeats, I saw the complaints you sent. I'm like, okay, well, sorry you viewed it as complaints and was just wondering if you read the link. But since you're not going to answer me, I'm going to go. I got to make some copies. So have a great night. Stay well. Bye. And I hung up. So that is a perfect example of a narcissist trying to cause trouble, trying to get under your skin, trying to get you riled up, trying to get you upset, trying to get you to come down to their level of misery. Not going to do it, guys. Not going to do it. 
So that's what you have to learn your, to protect yourself from. And if you get enough experience with narcissists, you can see when they're ready to do this. You can see it happening. You're, I just got bitten by a mosquito. Ugh. You can, you know that it's happening. It, you're aware of it. You, it, it's so clear to me. I mean, I was actually waiting. I was really, really waiting, wondering like, how long am I going to be able to be in a conversation with this person before they start this crap? So it took mm, six or seven minutes. And then I had to, you know, I was like, mm, done. I, it's amazing. I mean, it was as clear as day like that. I, I, I said, did you read the link? No, but I saw your complaints. And I was like, okay, but did you read the link? No, so I, three times. And I go, well, I'm sorry you viewed it as a complaint. I, I wasn't, you know, I w that wasn't my goal. I was just sharing with you what was going on with me. You know, the way I want people to share with me. But remember, narcissists don't give a crap about how you're feeling. They don't care at all. Cute guy walking in with a, could be a girlfriend, could be a daughter. I don't know. Let's go check it out. I got to go make a copy. Guy's got a lot of muscles. Meanwhile, he's probably 22 years old, old enough to be my son. Oh, boy. And I'm not a cougar. Aren't you guys? But ow, this cougar will not tolerate narcissists. I'm not a cougar. But I am a cougar to protect myself. Anyway, let's talk about narcissism. Let's talk about how you deal with a narcissist. The cat is over there. The one that I fed. He's over there now. He didn't eat my food. That cat is a damn narcissist. That's crazy. Well, when I come out of Office Max, I'm going to move the food over there. That's nuts. All right, I got to go. You guys, have a great night. Maybe I'll move the food now. I think I'm going to go get it now. All right, have a great night, guys. Bye, and don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and let's talk about life in my next video. Bye.